This is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're at the Small Cap Discoveries Conference 2017 in Vancouver, BC. With me right now is David Wolf from Hamilton Thorne. It's a publicly traded company, two symbols for you, HTL on the TSX Venture and HTLZF on the OTC Markets. David, welcome to SNN Live. All right. Thank you, Robert. Happy to be here. It's great to have you. We are too. <laughs> so to start off, for those who don't know, let's get an overview of the company and go from there. Sure. So we uh, design, develop, market, and manufacture um, products that are used in the assisted reproductive technology space. So that means all of the kinds of procedures that enhance reproduction in humans and animals. About 85% of our business is focused on human IVF clinics, and the balance is focused in the animal market. So tell me a little history of the company. How did it get its start and then developed to where it's currently at today? Sure. So the company has a uh, long history. It was started originally in the 80s, primarily to provide products for equine reproduction, horse, horse reproduction. Uh, two people who loved horses got involved in this. Over the years, the company has evolved, and particularly in the last five years, we've been focused much more on human reproduction. And in the last two or three years, we've done several acquisitions that have significantly expanded uh, both the size of our business and the scope of our products and services. So another question that I had that I wanted to know is, what is what's the company's competitive advantage? Sure. So we are known for our uh, technology. Uh, we're prim primarily a technology company, so the products that we have, both the capital equipment that we sell, are innovative and differentiated products in each of the areas. We have several lines of capital equipment. There are specific areas of competitive advantage. We also provide a range of consumables that are of the highest quality, as well as services. And that whole package put together, including the delivery that we provide to the uh, clinicians and the labs in the assisted reproductive clinics, combines to give us a great competitive advantage. So David, what, what does the competitive landscape look like as well? So the way we think about the market, the overall market for uh, human-assisted reproduction is about a $15 billion market. And that includes uh, both the markets that we serve, which is, again, providing equipment, consumable software, and services to the assisted reproductive technologies labs, as well as a variety of other products that we don't sell, ranging from pharmaceuticals to things like ultrasound machines that are used in the doctor's suite. So the, our addressable market is about a billion-dollar market, again, for consumables, product, uh, equipment, and services. We have about 150 other companies who com we compete against or collaborate with, depending upon the, uh, the particular opportunity. There are two reasonable large players, uh, and we're right in the, in the next tier of significant size players. So in terms of FDA and regulatory procedures, you know, what, what's that look like in terms and how does that relate to your business? Sure, I think that's an interesting question. So we have a worldwide business. Uh, we have, through a combination of our own direct sales teams, one in uh, the German-speaking countries in Europe as well as in the U.S., good coverage in uh, the two largest mark two of the largest markets for human IVF, as well as distribution relationships in over 60 different countries. So our products, when they're sold into the clinic, typically require not only FDA clearance for sale into the U.S., a CE mark for sale into the Europe, CFD clearance if they're sold into China. Uh, we have clearances for sales in a variety of other countries ranging from Russia, Australia, uh, Thailand, and the whole laundry list. So it's a highly uh, regulated area which can be a good thing because it makes sure the products and services are both safe and effective but is also a significant amount of work. So Back in April, uh, the company announced that you did a deal for an acquisition. Can you explain the nature of this deal and also what's the company's criteria for sure. potential future acquisitions? Yeah, let me start a little bit with our acquisition strategy. We are looking to be able to be a provider of the broad range of products and services that are used in the IVF lab. Today, we have uh, products and services that cover virtually all of the areas, but we don't have cover every product or service. So we did a, an acquisition in April. We bought a company called uh, Gynamed GmbH, based in Germany, which has tremendous direct sales in the European market, so um, a strong addition to our territory coverage, as well as about 80% of the business was um, and is 
con a consumables business. Primarily the flagship product is cell culture media, which is the liquid that embryos grow in during the IVF process. Historically, Hamilton Thorne has been primarily an equipment and services business, so by combining the equipment product, the equipment business, and the consumables business, we're able to have a much broader product range. And what's your background? How did you get into all of this? Uh, so I have an eclectic background. I um, have st uh, spent my time in my business career managing a number of different companies, uh, companies from both uh, distribution businesses, technology businesses, and uh, software businesses. Uh, so this is my first foray into life sciences. But on the other hand, I view our business as largely a technology business that happens to participate in the healthcare space. So what are some of the growth drivers for the business? So the growth drivers, particularly in the IVF area, are tremendous. Uh, people are, uh, women are waiting longer to have kids, and the longer you wait to have kids, the more trouble typically you have having, uh, having children, so you need to look at uh, assisted reproduction. The other area that maybe is not quite as obvious is in developing countries like China and India and Brazil, where you wouldn't think there would be necessarily a birth rate problem. In fact, we're seeing the same kinds of dynamics. As wealth grows, people are waiting longer and longer to start to get their careers established, start to have children, and now that they can afford IVF, we're seeing tremendous growth in those countries. So we're seeing, it, for example, in our business, uh, China has been, over the last few years, our largest growing market, eclipsed just last year by India, which was our largest growing market. So, David, where can our audience go and find more information about the company? So, please uh, visit us at our website. That's www.hamiltonthorne, H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N-T-H-O-R-N-E.com. My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live. And we're here at the Small Cap Discoveries Conference 2017 in Vancouver, B.C. With me again is David Wolf from Hamilton Thorne publicly traded company, two symbols, HTL on the TSX Venture and HTLZF on the OTC markets. David, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.